Hey, Internet friend, this is Matt Grab with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative and soon to be Synergy Retreats. we got a lot of that stuff going on. And I got my, my Wellness Wednesday friend here. Derek, you there? I am right here. Look, we got. We got some applause for you today. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of fun. You know, like we don't have any people here. You're in your office by yourself. I'm in my office by myself. We don't have anybody to applaud, no studio audience. So we made a virtual one. <laughs> so you just had your event that you did. That was, uh, was that the weekend? When was that? Uh, yeah, it was last Thursday. Last Thursday, yeah. Okay, yeah. The, the, the ladies' night um, celebrating the uh, Be Pink campaign that Jane Bratton Breast Center does, and so we re we reached our goal. We hit two thousand dollars that we're going to be able to donate to the um, Jane Bratton Breast Center. So cool, two thousand bucks in a day—that's not bad. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> so today, let's talk about food. Let's talk right. about nutrition and stuff. Um, I like it. Here, here's something I'm kind of curious about. I just saw saw a guy that's got this nutrition program. He's got this big bulk powder thing that he takes in the morning, and he did a little. It was um. Fiber. It was dietary fiber. Yeah. And he took a glass of water, put two scoops of this thing in here, and then waited, and the thing got hard. And his suggestion was to take it and you mix this up, and right after breakfast you down it all. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I Think mean, I mean, yeah. It, it's fiber is a, a really good thing. It's something that uh, you know a lot of people don't get enough of in their diet. Yeah. Um, and so they they instead of trying to find a lot of Foods that have fiber in it, you can. It's one of those things that you can kind of supplement in with a shake, or and there's plenty of different things that you can do with it um, to put it in. And uh, yeah, it kind of helps to. Um, it basically helps to move your digestive tract. It helps your digestive system and helps you break down food a little bit better and, and easier. Um, and so yeah, it's it's something that's very helpful, especially as you get a little bit older in life. It really does help you uh, break down your food better. So there's the the, the soluble fiber in that insoluble fiber yeah yep exactly that's what i'm trying to understand and the, the insoluble fiber kind of goes around the intestines and the soluble goes through in it yeah yep see i'm yeah. pretty smart yeah right exactly <laughs> here's a barrier that the fiber can kind of break through and get into your digestive tract and help to kind of move your and process your food along okay so I'm assuming the way they make this powder is they take the uh, the dietary fiber from real vegetables and they process it into a powder and then you put it in water and then it redoes itself. Couldn't you just take like this this weekend we made stew, so you take it and you peel the carrots. Yeah. So you want the peelings? Well, couldn't you just take all those peelings and put them in a in a Vitamix and zip them all up into liquid and drink that? Yeah, it, it depends on what which <laughs> vegetables there. There are some vegetables that have. Uh, a casing around them that you want to get rid of, like bananas, for instance. Yeah, I guess. You know, you know, but there are some that the skin is actually some of the, the best part of the of the uh, plant or the vegetable that you want to, you do want to keep in there, and, and it does have a lot of the fibrous material around it. Like carrots. Like carrots. Snap peas. Yep, snap peas are really good. Yep, I eat them like candy. Yeah, oh, I, <laughs> I love those. Those are my two uh, my two go tos here at the office. I always have a bag of each. Here in the fridge, and so they're they're kind of my my mid um, mid afternoon snack that I have um, to kind of keep my metabolism going. How about radishes? I'm not a huge radish person, but they, mm -hmm. they are pretty good for you. Yeah. Because I'm just thinking of some of the things that have peelings on them, like potatoes. That's like a thing of starch. I guess the peelings are probably better for you than the potato is. Yeah. The the problem that we're running into now is um, you know the the nutrients that all these vegetables and fruits and, and different things are being farmed from the the nutrients the soil in there it doesn't have the amount of nutrients that it did 20 30 40 50 years ago um and so that's where people are having to do a lot more supplementation of this stuff that's why I like these um you know these new um healthy shakes uh, and different things are, are becoming a lot more popular because we do have to supplement a little bit more of this stuff into our systems because the even if you're going organic and all natural, non-GMOs, like all that stuff, it still doesn't have the amount of nutrients that they did 40, 50 years ago. Because the, the soil has been... It's been depleted, yeah. Huh. And, and, you know, and a lot of times you know, the farmers are using a lot of different chemicals to try to create that nutrition again, but right. it's just not as, as good as... Well, that's kind of creepy, isn't it, that the, the 
that uh, grown food is ended up not not being as healthy as like manufactured Franken food. Oh yeah, <laughs> soil and green. Yeah, it's it's not. Uh, um, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. I mean, that all those different companies like Monsanto and, and different things they they put a ton of different chemicals in their in their processed foods, and that's why people are getting more and more away from them. I mean, that's why. I mean, you you can look at. Uh, you know, let's just say 50 years ago or 60 years ago, you know, you didn't really hear much about people having a gluten insensitivity, you know, yeah. or gluten intolerance or anything. The reason that that's come up over the past, you know, how many years and become a lot more prevalent is because of the different chemicals that people have in our digestive tracts. Just they can't process that stuff as well. And so you start to have, you know, intolerances or you have allergies or allergic reactions to some of these different foods. Right. Now, is that also because these farms are lo- lo- sort of commercial farms and they're really kind of pressing them to process and produce and they don't get to really change their crops anymore? They just kind of redo the soil with fake nutrients? Yeah. Well, and you're trying to, I mean, the more the more crops you produce, the more money that you're going to be able to make and the more that you're going to be able to sell. And so, you know, a lot of times the farmers, instead of, you know, Back in the day, you know, you'd have one growing season to be able to grow all these different things. Well, now what what a lot of them do, and I'm not saying all of them do this, but a lot of them that are commercially based, they're, you know, planting in the spring and then putting hormones and different things to help them grow faster and quicker. Sure. So they can harvest them midsummer, replant again, and then have another um, set come through because it's just more more product for them to be able to sell right. more money than be able to make. I suppose like they create these big giant greenhouses that work year round and they change the environment inside of them, change the ecology inside of a big dome or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, Costa Rica, you know, I'm working on this Costa Rica project. There's a lot of stuff down there that's still vibrant and uninhabited. And Oh, absolutely. I mean, and, and it, I'm not, you know, I'm not a farmer. I'm not a grower. I don't know what the climate has to be to to produce certain, certain things, but I know Costa Rica has a lot. I mean, coffee for one of them, I think. Costa Rica produces a ton and ton of coffee beans each year. Well, th- there's all sorts of fruits and stuff down there. My friend yeah. Nick has been down there for like 12 years, and he talks about, you know, there's trees. You just pick stuff right off and eat it right off the vine. And the, those, the rainforest, you know, it, I think it uh, really circulates more, so it's not like a farm that is uh, planted and harvested and planted and harvested and planted and harvested. This is stuff what? that's moving around. Yeah. And it, and it definitely goes to, you know, attest to how much healthier those cultures are than, than we are. I mean, yeah, they might not have the industrialization that we do or the technology that we do, but their their health overall, yeah. the, the foods that they're eating is way, way, way better than, than ours. And I mean, and that's the whole epidemic with type 2 diabetes being so prevalent now here in the yeah. United States. It's because we're eating all this processed foods and these all these chemicals in our system. It's just, it's not good for our bodies. Totally. And uh, I remember I uh, used to vacation in Bali and I see these women that are, they look like they're a hundred and something years old, but they're still walking around, going up hills and things. And And I mean, that, I mean, that definitely plays a part to what they're eating, but it also goes into just their activity levels. Yeah. Because here we roll around, we take elevators, we take escalators. (laughs) Yep, exactly. I mean, and we've, we've created a more efficient society. But at the same point in time, it's really, really harmed the the or the activity that we have. The I mean, even in my profession, what I see on a daily basis, more often than not, the reason that people are coming into my office because they're having neck pain or back pain or anything like that, it just comes to the lack of activity that they're doing. They're right. sitting at the desk at a computer for eight to nine hours a day, and their joints and their muscles aren't being mobilized the way that our bodies are meant to. To do and uh, that that puts a lot of stress onto your spine and on your nervous system. Well, I suppose after a while, if some bones are together, they'll eventually calcify and they'll they'll fuse, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and that's the whole process when I talk to people about you know we see a lot of people in here who have you know degenerative discs or de- degenerative joints and you know and I tell them I'm like yes, part of it has to do with the alignment issue that's going on. But for the most part, it's mostly the motion. They, they, the lack of motion within that joint starts to cause it to, you know, degenerate and break down. And, and yes, their bones, your body's only natu- natural defense mechanism to this is we need to try to fuse this up so that it stops rubbing against itself. 
from doing that. So you start to produce calcium deposits and bone spurs and all that stuff. Yeah, I suppose uh, the body's smart enough to realize that. I mean, calcium is, is not a bad thing. It probably goes into the right spots at the right time. It's uh, very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't uh, want to do these too long because I want people to be able to have the time to be able to consume them all, if you will, for their... For sure mind food. So I appreciate you taking the time again, and uh, we'll see you next uh, Wednesday for Wellness Wednesday. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thanks, Derek. Peace. All right. Bye. Do this, do that, do this. November.